Uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening in any particular order. Hope you're all well. My name is Ross and we're here with another Learning with Line 6. Let's get the awkward bit out of the way because I've struggled with this a little bit recently. Let me know the sounds all right. Let me know you can hear everything and this is what my voice sounds like. It's not great. It is what it is. And there's the guitar. Hopefully the levels all work out and um, you can hear everything clearly. Um, and then I'll fill for a minute while I wait for the delay and someone chimes in and says, hey, it sounds good. Hopefully that's all right. Um, so yes, I'm Ross. Um, we're gonna talk acoustic tones tonight um, and we're gonna use Podgo. So I, sounds fine, cool, thank you, Thomas. Wicked. So I've done a couple of um, acoustic gigs recently and I took out full helix and it was a it was a little overkill to be honest. Um, big pedal board used like four or five blocks. Um, so started using pod go and it worked out brilliantly and gave me a couple of other ideas uh, because you've got the fixed blocks on there. I'm like, oh, how can I use these to best effect and get the most out of it? So that's what we're going to cover today. Uh, we'll look at um, some clever use of EQ, uh, using some effects, um, impulse responses as well, which traditionally people are used to using cabinet impulse responses with amps. We're going to use acoustic ones. Um, uh, maybe go through a couple, make make a regular piezo equipped guitar sound marvelous um, and we'll look at using actual amp models as well because why not um, a ton of people put acoustic guitars through amps stacks whatever um, so we'll mess around with some sounds hopefully get some cool stuff uh, that you can walk away with um, I've actually been somewhat organized this time I've uploaded these sounds to cursometime.com and you'll see them in the links uh, in the chat there so go and check them out help yourself um, the one with the impulse response we'll get to, but you will need to find them, download your own, and import those. Hopefully that makes sense. So, um, signal chain is I'm going straight into Hot Go. We're using my fabulous Yamaha A5R. Beautiful acoustic. Now this does have some mic simulation on. Um, I'll use that a little bit. Uh, but for the most part, I'll just be using the Paizo Bridge system. So it's more what people are going to be used to. So, and I'm going to, little disclaimer, I'm not an acoustic player. There'll be a lot of cowboy chords. There'll be near no finger star playing because I just can't do it. So um, I'll save the embarrassment for anyone that can. So setting up a basic preset is, is really easy. I'll show you what kind of what my main preset looks like. It looked like that. So we've got a volume. Uh, there is a wire in there, which I'm not using. Um, we've got the LA Studio Comp. Got some chorus because fun. Um, studio 2 preamp. I've got a cab in there, and I'll show you what that's doing as well. I've got a high and low EQ. Uh, that's doing something pretty cool. And then just a delay and uh, talent or reverb, as most people know it. But at the moment, all that's on is the Studio 2 preamp and the reverb, and kind of that's what it sounds like. So. so hopefully that sounds pretty cool. It's fairly basic. Uh, I'm gonna keep switching between screens, keeping on the comments, and we're good, marvelous. Uh, with the mic simulation on, um, if you have something like a uh, uh, an acoustic with like the, the Fishman Aura system, for example, or a Yamaha with the SRT system, um, it sounds great. So it sounds like. That. That's interfering with my microphone, so let me know if this sounds a little bit weird because uh, I can try and remember to mute it. So that's kind of what I'm going with the basic sound. Now I want to manipulate that a, a little bit, and I don't want to carry really more than one acoustic around. I certainly don't want to carry a 12 string around because I'm lazy. 
So what I've done is added the chorus, so I'll turn that on. Um, and it's kind of a very wet, the Trinity is very wet sounding, and it gives me a passable kind of 12 string thing. <laughs> kind of thing for the solo stuff um, or more ambient things we've got the delay and then as a boost I've got the LA studio comp so for any kind of soloing I guess um, it's just gonna sponge it out give me a little bit more sustain and give me a little bit of volume <laughs> So a bunch of different sounds there. Now I want a little bit more versatility. Uh, do 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 do. Posted a little pod. Um, Les, uh, no, they offer pod go. Um, or should be. That's what I've downloaded them from. So check them out. Um, <clears throat> if I add the jazz rivet uh, I've gone for cab it's good, just going to give me a different kind of EQ quality because ultimately it's kind of a filter I've got that if I have the jazz rivet just a completely different tonal quality and you might need that um, for either a different sound or to maybe cut through in a specific part of the mix um, or just you know just something completely different so you can use a cab model um, like I said the Studio 2 preamp that I've used it's just the preamp um, and it just gives it a little something you've got an amount you've got the high and the low cut in there um, you can actually give it a little bit more juice on the game <laughs> feedback kind of loud in the room oh that sounds bad there we go so you can that get that to kind of gain up a little bit um, now with the EQ uh, that one you'll see I've taken the high cut pretty much all of the way off and a bit of low cut on there and I've boosted it because I'm cutting these frequencies quite extremely um, I've needed to boost the level so the idea with this was sometimes I want to kind of maybe get a nylon sort of sound. So essentially, this is, it doesn't sound exactly like a nylon, but in a mix, um, it's absolutely passable and works a treat. Excuse me. has pulsed the cut signal for an instant every second right okay so I'm going to mute my mic and I'll try and remember to unmute it and then mute it again when I play wish me luck bye <laughs> So when you're playing chords, it, it can be kind of dark. Um, just tweak that high and low cut. Depending on what you're doing, it's a passable nylon string sound, like I said. So that's kind of what my basic preset would be. It's going to give me 
different sounds gonna be, give me a ton of versatility got a volume pedal in there so i can use that just to kind of um uh, go from rhythm to lead happy days nice and tidy the next preset is where i start using the ir stuff so again basic setup <clears throat> with a studio tube i've got an impulse response in there um we've still got the trinity chorus studio comp simple delay and the play reverb um same with the eq as well so what i'll do i'll show you what this impulse response is doing so this is actually simulating um uh, i haven't got my glasses on there we go um uh ships don't know if i pronounced that right uh, uh ships microphone on this kind of style body there we go That's without the impulse response now with the impulse response. So you can hear it's kind of giving that very airy kind of mic acoustic sound which is pretty cool um uh Robert, uh I'm guessing that's hello from argentina hello hola um pretty good nylon emulation on guitars piezo pickups piezo piezo i'm going with piezo uh, i'll turn the present setting down or well, makes the guitar sound a lot more realistic yeah absolutely kind of the eq you, you could totally do a million things with the parametric EQ um, or graphics or whatever. I'm really bad at using those. <laughs> so I went the simple route um, and just shaved the, the high end for the high cut. It, it worked for me. It kind of worked in the room. I've tried it in a mix and it was absolutely fine. So yeah, um, kind of mess around uh, and see what you want to do yourself. So yeah, the impulse response. So these, I got a few. I just found them on a, on a forum somewhere downloaded them and they absolutely work a treat straight to pod go and there was a few there's like an atom 57 um and a, a neumann and various other things and they all sound differently what i've found is if you have the mix all of the way up it can get a little bit funky with the sound so I kind of have the mix around halfway so you're getting some of the piezo uh, but you're getting some of that impulse response as well and it's a nice balance but again feel it out kind of depends on the environment you're in what guitar you're using um what you're playing with as well if you're playing in a full band you might need more or less so again it's kind of just experimenting the presets that i've uploaded it's just a starting point but um, yeah if you google acoustic impulse responses you will find them um i think there's some of the big companies that do them as well so uh, yeah um hi uh, hi from italy hi italy um hi from the uk there we go so that's kind of the impulse response thing just to kind of demonstrate another one let's go with a 57 um mute my mic So again, that versus no impulse response. No, I'll stop that immediately. So you get the idea. Um, Another one, an example, the Earthworks mic. It's a really nice kind of mic acoustic sound um, rather than that kind of quacky piezo thing. Um, I quite like that. Moving on to uh, the next one. Next preset. There we go. So this is again um, a song that we performed, and I just kind of did this normally on electric guitar and blagged it. 
Um, but the original is on acoustic and then he switches to what sounds like an electric, but it's an acoustic going through an electric amp. Um, so I've kind of tried to do that. Um, Louis, hi from Buenos Aires. Ooh, hi Buenos Aires. Hi from the UK. So what I've done here, again, basically the same kind of setup um, uh, with the delay and the reverb. Uh, the EQ I've changed slightly and that's now acting more like a solo boost. Um, I put a phaser in there because why not? Um, I've got a Minotaur in there. Again, why not? And you, you might think kind of distortion um, on acoustic guitar can sound a little bit yeah, but it, it works really, really well. So again, just using a gain pedal for just some extra dynamics or something a bit more interesting. So you can hear in isolation, there's a little bit of hair on that, but in kind of a mix with a full band, you won't hear that filth, but you're going to hear that kind of extra little bit of warmth. Um, and it's going to give you a little bit more dynamics and make it a little bit easier to play, especially if you're getting all shreddy shreddy. Uh, let's let that one back up. So what I've done, I've assigned, I've got rid of the effect loop um, on the foot switch, and I've assigned it to turn on that particular foot switch to turn on amp and cab. And for the amp and cab, I'm using uh, the cartographer and the Interstate 212. Um, and it's kind of going for something kind of somewhere like a nice middle ground between scoopy and quite mid focused. But I've also got, if I need more mids, then I've got that Minotaur in there as well. So straight acoustic. Something like this on. again and then turn the amp on. Well, that sounds a lot with the Minotaur as well. And yeah, you can totally strut on it if you want. kind of to me again in the room that's that's a passable kind of gain sound yeah it might be a little bit filthy roll the game back do what you want um but it's just a good starting point and and just totally different from obviously the natural acoustic sound um and although you don't hear that much it's definitely a thing the edge did it in a song which i can't remember the name of um but actually used one of the old Line 6 Variax acoustics for that. And it, it's a very, very specific sound. But again, I keep saying this, but in a mix, absolutely passable. So have a mess around. Um, Dooby doo, check some comments. Uh, would be nice to have an AR amp model. Um, yeah, Thomas, maybe. But again, remember the AR stuff or acoustic amps in general, they're designed to generally not have any kind of voice. Um, so it's it's essentially a PA. Um, 
but no those have a certain kind of type of dynamics and there's a couple of other acoustic amps i know of that have a, a specific feel rather than a tone um so but um uh, idea scale go to idea scale chug it on there um you're getting some good clean tones with your settings thank you very much pixel uh i would skip the minotaur sure um TS or you know the Timmy is really good as well um, even just let's try a couple of others just as an example so the kinky boost uh, is a good one so that on its own without the amp significant amount of boost but uh, putting that into I'm gonna need the bright on that I already know uh, so putting that into the uh, the amp kind of a little bit flubby but you get the idea if I want to tighten that up, I'm keeping an eye on the levels here, um, I would maybe use my kind of go to the air apparent. Maybe use the boost, and if I go to the amp model, turn the gain down a wee bit, turn that off. You see me do this live? No idea what I'm doing. Let's experiment. Let's have fun. It's a sound. Um, it might sound great with a ton of other things going on. So again, it's just about experimenting, finding what works for you, and just having a bit of fun with it. Um, or you can just plug straight in and get a great acoustic sound. Um, do do do. I like the tube screamer absolutely, Stephen. Um, for clean nylon string guitar and piezo pickup and jazz reverb, yeah, absolutely picks a lot. If you do have an actual nylon string, um, you can do exactly the same stuff as I'm already doing um, and get different nylon string sounds. So you get certainly, obviously, more darker. Or um, whilst you probably wouldn't be able to create a still string sound, um, you can still mess around with EQ to the heart's content. Um, how about twin reverb? That's clean. It might be nice, Thomas. I will absolutely do that. So let's go for the US double norm. And there's a, a UK artist that does this. He uses um, actually uses this particular amp uh, for acoustic guy called Seth Lakeman. Beautiful folk music. Go and check him out. Let's see what that sounds like. Also works that I found earlier um, was actually turning the cab off and using a preamp model. So if we do the same thing with a preamp, uh, and not all preamps are kind of the same uh, thing, depends on how the amp's wired. So I might fail on this, but let's have a go. Another 
one that I thought was really nice was this one. So using the pram models without the caps in works really well too. Um, again, just super versatile. There's absolutely no problem with using anything in this for acoustic guitar. Um, if you have a Yamaha silent guitar, for example, um, or one of the solid body uh, things, then you, you're laughing, you do whatever you want with it. Um, with an actual acoustic guitar, you might get some feedback issues, but again, just experiment. Um, I roll it sounds really good. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Um, you have plenty of blocks to use. You absolutely do, Thomas. You have plenty to use. Um, and if you want to kind of do mad syncopated stuff with different tremolos and delays, do all of that. You can get really interesting. Obviously, um, if you want to use external effects, you've got the loop in Podgo 2. Um, you've got the amp out, so you can actually have, still have a dry output straight to uh, PA2. Um, so there's a ton of different things you can do and it's just a really nice kind of compact multi-effect solution for acoustic. Um, like I said, you have something like uh, the MRA series or or anything with the SRT pickup in, then you've got those mic options as well without the need for using IRs, which is great. It's just a beautiful sound of acoustic. This is my main one, so go and check these out. Um, uh, preamp sounds really good. So do the twin. Cool. Yeah, yeah, Thomas. Again, everyone, go and check them out. Have a mess around. Maybe you know, super high gain stuff might not work as well. Um, because this is going to be a much higher output, I guess, than than a regular electric guitar, depending on what pickups you're using. Um, you might need to turn things down a little bit. You'll certainly need to shave some low end off. Um, and, and find a balance there with it still being big and beefy, but without the guitar actually sort of flubbing things out. Um, and whilst this has got a little bit of EQ on here, I've not touched it. So, you know, again, depending on what guitar you're using, just a little bit of experimentation. Like I said, you absolutely just plug straight in and, and get a great acoustic sound. Uh, Tom says, how do I monitor live? Depends on the gig. Sometimes there's no monitor in. Sometimes I've got any ears, um, and sometimes I actually have a monitor. So it, it really does all depend on the gig. The first couple of acoustic gigs I did recently, no monitoring. Um, so that was fun, um, and just had to hope for the best really on levels. But um, but yeah, got it really dialed in on the next one because I had full um, full big old fashioned wedges. So that was good. Um, and I could get a much better idea of levels, which is always going to be the thing. Um, without using kind of a heavy compression, you're going to get a lot more kind of dynamic range, I guess, with something like this. Um, and if you haven't got any way to monitor it, then it might be a struggle. So invest in some in-ears because it's a good thing. Um, so I think we're kind of about there. Like I say, go back if you've uh, just come in, Go back, check out um, the earlier uh, part of the chat. I've posted the tones for you to download. Remember, on the one with an IR, you'll have to find your own and download it unless you already have some. Um, but I found some for free. Uh, I'm sure there's a ton that you can buy, but just Google acoustic impulse responses and you'll get something like. So um, I'll try and keep an eye on the comments. Um, oh, and Stephen says, how would you give uh, the house without reverb? You would go out of the amp out of pod go, young man. Um, and you can set that kind of before uh, any uh, reverb. So yeah, front of house can do their thing. You can monitor with your own. Um, if you're using Helix or Apex products, then you just send a feed, um, like a parallel thing, I guess. Um, to front of house its own output before the reverb or any other effects that you might want to use. I hope that makes sense. 
Um, so once again, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Um, apologies if the sound was a little bit weird at the start, but hopefully we're on the top of it. And I remembered to mute and then unmute. So stay safe, stay well, go and download some presets, have some fun, and we'll do another one of these same time, same place next week. Thanks again for tuning in. Much appreciated. See you again soon. Cheers. Bye.